History enthusiasts owe a lot to medieval explorers and modern archaeologists. Their work is profoundly valuable to the study of ancient and medieval times. Despite the tremendous value they bring, they sometimes mishandle the cultures observed. So today, I wanted to speak about one of these blunders which led to the burial of an ancient Nubian palace. What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. On Patreon, you can find more in-depth courses on African history. Also, your support helps the channel grow, improving production quality and future animated projects. The link to Patreon is in the description box below. Stay tuned with word from my sponsors. My name is Howard Dorsey, I'm 54 years old. I'm here to talk about my uh, experience with herbal results. Um, I was getting sick, so I, I went to the doctor and they told me that um, my blood pressure was high, my cholesterol was borderline or high, so I was very sick. You know, I thought I was, sometimes I thought I was dying at, at some point. And uh, I ordered a bottle of olive leaf extract. This is, this is how the bottle comes in. And within the first probably a week and a half, two weeks, I checked my blood pressure and it was back down to normal. It was like 120 over 80. My cholesterol went down to uh, 125. You know, I definitely believe that olive leaf extract from Herbal Results saved my life. And I, that's real. I mean, I, 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 and I recommend it to everyone in my family, my friends, and we've seen a lot of results in that, in that manner as well. Purchase now at herbalresults.net. George Reisner is undoubtedly one of the most important figures in the field of Nubian archaeology. We know a great deal about Nubian history because of his monumental work. He's an incredibly valuable resource, and that's just an unassailable reality. All in all, despite some of his reflexive white supremacist proclivities, the purpose of this video is not intended to be an indictment or even a critique of George Reisner. Our primary focus is to document and demonstrate why we know so little about this particular Nubian palace. George Reisner was born in Indianapolis and should be given a very high place among the Hoosier intellectuals of the 19th and 20th centuries, for he was one of the greatest field archaeologists of his time. The field of archaeology, especially in the 19th and 20th centuries, wasn't perfect. Aside from being men of their time, they also made some decisions that could be deemed invidious to the average African history enthusiast. For example, Giuseppe Ferlini in the 19th century completely destroyed numerous Nubian pyramids. His excavations were far from being done in good faith. However, in this particular circumstance, I would shy away from associating George Reisner with that level of disregard and unprofessionalism. Depending on your degree of sensitivity, his mishap seems less nefarious. Mr. Reisner worked at a site called Jebel Barka in modern day Sudan. He also worked in the surrounding area between 1916 and 1920. Some of his work unfortunately remains unpublished and there are some that seek to fill those gaps. This complimentary work has allotted the general public information on a rediscovered African palace. Mr. Reisner discovered this Nubian palace called B-100 and proceeded to have it cleared and recorded. However, what happened from there gets a little complicated, to say the least. The problem of locating B-100's true position of the site was caused by Reisner's decision to rebury it before he put it on his site map. Once he had cleared and recorded it, he decided in 1919 to use it as a dump site for debris from his excavations in B-501. Since he judged Meroitic buildings to be of secondary importance to the earlier building he was looking for, he saw no problem in covering B-100 with a great spoil heap. Today, it remains hidden and inaccessible, except through Reisner's own records. So according to this scholar, George Reisner discovered and inadvertently removed an ancient Nubian palace literally from the map by burying it and not officially publishing. It's difficult to say if he had intentions on going back to clear it again. All we know is that it never happened. 
Perhaps the most awe-inspiring discovery in this area was Natakamani's palace called B-1500. And according to Timothy Kendall, Natakamani's palace and B-100 may have been associated and used contemporaneously. Eventually, B-1200 ceased to be used and was replaced by B-100, which, if built to complement B-1500, can probably also be dated to the joint reign of Natakamani and Amanatori. Internal features suggest that B-100 underwent at least two renovations and could well have had a lifespan of over a century. Timothy Kendall believes that the palace at B-100 may have been a ceremonial palace used by the Nubian king to prepare himself for religious or cultural events and the palace at B-1500 was an actual residence of the king. A brief description concerning what we know of B-100 is worthy of note. Reisner exposed its complete ground plan and opened up all of its rooms, which on the ground floor alone number 23, with four hallways and two central staircases. Most of these rooms were doorless foundation cells filled with rubble and built with baked brick to protect the walls from now floods. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in this continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey.